Welcome to Chicago Independent Television, a collection of progressive video reports by grassroots media workers from Chicago and beyond. We produce without corporate and commercial supporter influence. I'm Mia Park and I'm reporting to you from the Magnificent Mile, Chicago's famed Michigan Avenue. On March 18, 2006, 10,000 people marched down this very street to protest the war and the occupation in Iraq. The march itself was called the Festival of Rights, and its route down Michigan Avenue represented a victory of free speech in Chicago. In this episode, we'll hear from the organizers, we'll hear from the participants, and we'll see on-the-spot coverage of the march itself. Stay with us. Tired of peace, prosperity, and a clean environment? Ready to lose millions of those bothersome jobs? Want to get your children out of the house and into Iraq? Too many freedoms and opportunities keeping you up at night? Think the rich just aren't rich enough? Then call for my free presidential misinfotapes now. These misinfotapes are guaranteed to get you off course and keep you divided. Call 2800 Bush Industries. We have an entire cabinet standing by to bankrupt your nation and serve every corporate interest. Call 2800 Bush Industries today. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. On March 18th, over 100 peace groups joined together to protest the third anniversary of the war in Iraq. Their demands were simple. End the war on occupation and bring the troops home now. Let's join the Festival of Rights. On March 18th, the people of Chicago participated in a day-long anti-war protest against the war in Iraq, and we called it the Festival of Rights. It represented the coming together of over 110 endorsing groups, and it was the largest coalition of anti-war groups since the Vietnam War. Our message on March 18th was pretty simple, by design, so that people can remember it it was, and still is, end the war and occupation, troops home now. And that's really what we need to say and what needs to happen. Um, this war has been going on for too long. It never should have started. It was an illegal, immoral war based on lies. Uh, our government lied to us. There was never an imminent threat. There was no reason to do this. It was powerful. The contingent I was in, which came from Humble Park, from Union Park, uh, was part of the Freedom March, were about 40 or 50 young people. Um, but just in the sea, there was this amazing energy that was very, very positive. Uh, the march was lively, there were people chanting, there were people from different communities. Um, I think one of the Im most important thing was not just that it was orderly and that there were no arrests made at the end of the day, but the fact that people were there for a purpose. And you could see young and old, uh, gender mix, uh, from different communities. It was a very powerful thing. The day started at Union Park. It was cool, it was sunlit, it wasn't that cold, but it, it started in such a good way because at three o'clock, you had all the feeder marches converging and the rally started. And Linda Beckstrom, Cliff Kelly, and Michelle Morales were the co-MCs. Uh, they started off with Juan Torres, the father of one of the soldiers, his son, died in Afghanistan, and he became part of Military Families Against the War. Uh, but it was such a good feeling to see everybody cooperating, not just from different communities, but different left groups. Those were the positive things that the way we should have started the rally, and we did. When the rally at Union Park ended, we encouraged people to make their way to the staging area at Michigan Avenue, and we had buses provided for people that needed them, and we also encouraged people to take the L and other public transportation and make their way over. Then we started gathering in the school, the elementary school parking lot, Ogden School, at Staten Walton. Uh, once there, there was a short rally where we had uh, Standish Willis from the Black Lawyers, Alderman Rick Munoz, as well as Andy Thayer, who served as MC uh, for the stage there.
The feeling for so many of us on Michigan Avenue on March 18th was a feeling of triumph. And it was, it just sort of went through you like, like electricity, you know. It, it was a, an incredible feeling. And every step past Chicago Avenue was a step of victory. It really was, because that's where the stuff happened. And that was where the brakes were put on. And we really were denied our civil liberties for the past three years. And then suddenly there we were. And we were marching on Michigan Avenue and nobody was stopping us. And nobody was hassling us. And the police really couldn't do anything about it. And you could see, as we curved onto Wacker, you could see just how huge that crowd was. Because you could see the, how far it stretched in front of us. And you turned around, you could see how far it stretched behind us. Which is why those of us who were involved in organizing it believed that easily there were 10,000, if not more. It, it just had to be. Um, the estimate of 7,000 is just too low. And it was just really exciting. I mean, people were just having a great time. And the police were there, but they really sort of faded into the background after a while. We even had floats. Can you imagine an anti-war march with floats? OK, this float was designed by organizers from the World Can't Wait, Drive Out the Bush Regime. Cheney's sitting on top of the oil barrel, pulling the puppet strings, which of course are attached to George Bush. I think it's really exciting. You know, it's all kind of, everybody gets herded between the rows of the cops and the horses that are sort of keeping us in. This is great. It's, it's a really fun way to show our resistance. I mean, this is a very serious issue. All the stuff that Bush stands for upsets us greatly. But, you know, we can have a little fun too. I mean, I'm also one of the main coordinators of the arts movement within the World Can't Wait, so I fully believe that the arts are a way to motivate people and get people to understand serious issues, but, you know, in a way that kind of gets to you as a human. People are going to laugh. They'll enjoy seeing Bush and Cheney. I thought that, that it was key that we were able to unite the two, both Union Park and Michigan, because number one, they, they each achieved different things. And Michigan Avenue was important because it was sort of the culmination, the coming home of after four years of struggle, the right to march down probably the most widely viewed street on a Saturday night in Chicago. It's the Gold Coast, and uh, it's very expensive real estate and people pay attention to what happens on that street just for that reason. You had people from Bloomingdale's coming out, from Starbucks coming out, and they were pro-peace, and that was so important. It's important to the press, you know, I mean, that, which is part of the reason we've been denied access to that street, is because the whole world is watching what happens on Michigan Avenue. And, you know, that's why we want to be there. We want the world to see what we're doing and to see what we're saying. What do we want? Well, I think that it's important not to speak in generalities when we talk about why we're against the war. Uh, for my community, it's important because the number of Latinos and Puerto Ricans who have died, the number of young Latinos and Puerto Ricans who are recruited into JROTC across the city, 98% of them are black and Latino of JROTC cadets. But the fully human face of the cost of the war can't be measured in dollars and cents. It has to be measured in the impact, in the development of this country's economy, the destruction of the economy of Iraq, and the people. And I believe that this coalition, the March 18th coalition, made a significant stride in saying, not only to the rest of the United States, but the rest of the world, that there are people here who oppose this war. Hi, I'm Kathy Kelly with Voices in the Wilderness, based here in Chicago, and you're watching Chicago Independent Television.
burger, fries. Oh, yeah, we understand. Now you go. There's never been a better time to buy. Nope, no tea. Come on, you're fired. I'm more equal than you.